be saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and do speak in tongues as the Spirit give utterance. Praise the Lord. I know the Lord is with me. Huh? Glory to God. You ought to pray. You ought to know the Lord is with you. You ought to talk to the Lord sometimes. You ought to like David. Like David says, should we pursue? You ought to talk to the Lord. Lord, are you with me? Ooh, Lord, are you with me? You ought to talk with the Lord. <laughs> and as preachers, we'll preach to ourselves sometimes. Praise the Lord. Sometimes I'll be at home. All of a sudden, I'll preach to myself. Like, Lord, have mercy. And I get happy all about myself. Because the Spirit of the Lord come on in. My God today. Woo, glory to God. You just keep singing praises to the Lord. Sing praises. Y'all listen to me. songs and hymns. What the Bible said, build yourself up. And when I'm in the car, I'm listening to songs and hymns. I'm listening to the goodness of the Lord. What he's done, what he's doing. I'm praising his holy name. Praise the Lord. What you feed yourself is what's coming out. <laughs> Glory to God. We bless it today. We bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm glad today. I'm glad to, to God for you, you and you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to the word today. We thank God for this holiday season. But we realize that we've been taught down through the years that Jesus is the reason for every season. Don't you lose your mind because it's Independence Day. <laughs> Don't you lose your mind because the holiday every day belongs to the Lord. Don't you give no day to the devil. Somebody said, well, it's Friday the 13th. I don't care. God he gave us all the numbers. Them numbers belong to the Lord. He let us get them. No, no day belong to nobody else but to the Lord. Every day is the day of Thanksgiving. And we praise the Lord for his goodness. We're going to John 8, chapter 32nd verse and the 36th verse. Praise. Anybody glad for Jesus today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody made up their mind that before you left home, I'm going to give God some praise this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. You left home. Praise the Lord. You woke up with a mind. Uh, you, you know, when you got somewhere to go, you move it like, expeditiously. You move it. You got your clothes laid out. You get ready to go. I'm getting ready to go to the house of the Lord. I'm ready to praise the Lord. I'm ready to magnify his name. Yes, I bless him at home. But I'm coming to come together as a body to worship the Lord as a corporate body. He said, well, two or three, well, I'll be in the midst. You're going to get some extra for coming in the midst of the service. you be blessed at home, but that's something extra in the house of the Lord. I know what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about what somebody told me. I'm talking about what I'm living. Praise the Lord. The Lord blesses you real good. When you're dressed in the house of the Lord, he blesses you real good. Now through the years, you can say the Lord has been good to us. He's been good to you. Well, you might not deserve it, but the Lord has been good to you. Praise the Lord. John 8, 32 and John 8, 36. You have it in your Bibles this morning. Praise the Lord. We ought to throw your Bibles away. I know we got iPads and all kind of things. But we got still got a Bible you can flip and look at. And get in depth with still at home. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 836. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The thought today is I've got independence. I've got independence. In other words, I'm free. I've got independence. I'm free. Free means I'm not held as a slave or a prisoner to anything. Not physically held by something or anything at all. Independence is freedom. To be free, to be to have liberty from control, weights or burdens. We're in the holiday season and Independence Day is on tomorrow. And when we look at Independence Day, it talks about the freedom of the United States. And in the United States, this is a holiday on the 4th of July, commemorating the adoption of the Declaration of Independence on that day in 1776. The document or instrument containing such statement or proclamation as the Declaration of Independence, now preserved in Washington, D.C. In 1776, the Americans laid before Europe that noble declaration, what? which ought to be hung up everywhere in every nursery of every king and blazing on the porch of every royal palace. So for over 200 and something years, the United States has been celebrating our freedom. 
from the customs and mandates of the king and the monarchy of Europe. It's a major holiday everywhere in the United States. So we don't forget how proud we are when we see that flag, how proud we are of what? Our independence. And we united as the United States of America. If you don't know history, you need to know history. As we celebrate, we must continue to stand up for our freedoms and what this nation was built upon. And don't take our freedom for granted. What our forefathers fought for in the beginning, even when it comes to why there's a separation of church and state. And that was developed so the government wouldn't interfere with the church. Don't get it twisted. Knowing that this is a nation built upon God, the forefathers knew this nation was built upon on God. The money says in God we trust. And every nation, the Bible lets us know that forgets God. You know what? They get involved with all kinds of abomination things that like that's going on in this society. And they become destroyed. So we must keep our fiber and believe in God. So as much as we celebrate our national independence as a nation, we should understand we as saints of God, people of God, that believe in God and go to church, that we're really only free if we're free spiritually. We can be, you can be, you can be a slave and still but be free spiritually. Uh, but you gotta be free spiritually when you have repented and you receive the finished work of Jesus Christ. We must be free in our spirit. Free because we receive what Jesus has done on the cross for us. The Bible lets us know, and we know from study that we were worthy of death. Read your Bible. We were as filthy rags. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. Realize that we're all saved through grace. Nobody's good enough on their own. You can't say you're good enough on your own. That's how you got to say, I saved myself. Nobody saved themselves. I don't care how good you were, you still need to be saved from sin. That's the Bible. That's the book. But thanks be to God for his grace and his mercy. All of us needed it. Some are better and worse than others, but we all need to be saved. We're saved through grace and faith in Jesus Christ. And we believe, right? Jesus came. He thought it necessary to leave his royal address and come down here for us. He didn't do like we did. He's like, I'm tired of them. I'm staying here. But Jesus came down. Uh, he came down. He was born. He said, God gave him a way to come. You're going to be born. You're going to have to suffer. You're going to have to die. But in all that, God raised him from the dead. And receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and continually adding on to our faith, we can live this life. John 3, 16 through 18 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Everybody ought to know it, that whosoever Believing in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him what? Might be saved. There's the word. Might. You have to make up your mind. You have to be persuaded in your own mind that you might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. If you believe on him, you're not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. And they'll say, they don't need you to condemn. They're condemned already because they didn't believe. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus has already come. You believe that today? Jesus has already come. He's already done his job. And freed us from the curse. And gave us a new opportunity and a new lease on life. He came to free us from guilt and shame. Sin gives you guilt. Gives you shame. But he came that we wouldn't have that. He came and has become the complete fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Jesus to be king, priest, and sacrifice. He was the perfect atonement for all of our sins, for all the sins of everybody in the world, for billions of people. He's a high priest that cannot, that can be touched by what? Our weaknesses. The Lord knows what we're going through. You know, you try to go hide and isolate yourself like you're the only one. The Lord knows what you're going through. He knows what you are. He knows our infirmities. He knows our weaknesses. And the Bible lets us know he has taken the sting out of death. And the victory from the grave. And God has given him all power. Not some. All power. You know, some people got some power. 
You got some power according to what they give you. When you work places, they may give you, if you got any authority, they may give you some power. You don't have all power. But God has all power. He's given his son all power. Uh, so we should celebrate. Even as we're in the Independence Day, we should celebrate Jesus at all times. And what he's done every day, today, and forevermore is they're going to do in our lives. You got to understand that I know that they out starting, most of the people started yesterday shooting firecrackers and sparkles and doing all that kind of stuff. But Jesus is the, the sparkle. He's the firecracker that lights up the display. He's the light that lights up the world. And the Bible tells you he's the light of the world. And we ought to be lights of the world if we have him on the inside of us. He gives us the ability to reflect the glory of God in the world and to resemble that light in our lives. So we ought to celebrate Jesus, even as this, as he's the reason for every season. John 10 and 10 says what? The thief coming not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. But I love it when Jesus says, I come. I am come that you might have life. There's the word might is you got to receive it on your own. That you might have it more abundantly. Uh -huh. uh, you don't have to live in lack anymore. You can live in overflow. Why do you say you live in the overflow, Pastor Simmons? You live in the overflow. If God's got everything, Jesus got everything, and you belong to Jesus, you got you living in the overflow. But whatever you need, God's got it. You can call on God. You can talk to God. Jesus made it possible as the good shepherd who leads to God as an intercedes to God on our behalf. You believe that? He's the one that said, Lord, help him. Like we pray. We pray for our children. We pray for them. Lord, help them today. Lord, help them. Jesus makes the difference, and he's that very present help in a time of trouble. You know, when we get in trouble, a lot of times we run the wrong way. We run to everybody else who can't help us instead of running to Jesus. We, we brought up in the church, we sing the song, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. But we run to everybody else for help. But Jesus, the Bible says, a very present help in a time of trouble. That means he's already there, but the Bible says very present. That means if you call on him when you need help, He's already, you can really know that he's really right there. He's present. Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask and think. I used to tell Mother Con, I said, Mother Con, I can show things and think. God said, I can go beyond whatever you think. <laughs> whatever you want. According to the power that work in the law. God wants us to be free. Free to live. Free to dream. And to dream bigger. Free to expect God to do more in your life. You just live in complacency. You shouldn't live in that to do. But you serve a great God. That we all want to experience the whole power of God in our lives. God's got so much for us. He gives us the ability to think and have ideas. And then work the visions and the dreams that he gives to us. And work as believers. Freely we have received. And freely we give. Give what God has given to us. And then what we have received from him, we ought to be able to share the good news of the gospel. Because we are disciples of Christ. We're on a mission for the Lord. You believe that? We're on a mission. You didn't just get saved for yourself. You didn't get saved to stay in the house. You got saved to let the Lord be reflected out of you. That somebody would see Jesus in your life. That you would cause others, that you would have your own disciples. That would, people would be saved because of you. So I saw the other I got Jesus because they were saved. And I saw Jesus working in them. I saw Jesus turn that life around. I know what they used to be, but I've been watching. I know that God can do that for them. God can do it for me. Romans 6 and 18 said, Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. That the Lord would have his free course in our lives, saints. That God would be glorified. That we would be in right standing with God. Jesus made it possible that we would be in right standing with God. And Jesus has given us peace with God. He's given us peace with God that we have to accept Christ to have the peace of God. Uh -huh. So in the beginning of chapter 8 in the book of John, we were talking today, we find Jesus teaching in the temple. He's teaching the scribes and the Pharisees as they brought the adulterers to him, trying to tempt him, testing him in the knowledge of the law and the prophets. They knew Moses in the law commanded that anyone guilty in such an act should be stoned. But Jesus lifted himself uh, from riding on the ground and said, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. 
Bible says that them that heard Jesus saying, uh, being convicted in their own heart, their own conscience, they went out, the Bible said they went out one by one, from the oldest to the last that was left alone with the woman. The oldest, I said, in my mind, the oldest left first because they had done the most of their life. <laughs> they know they had done terrible. So from the oldest to the least, they all scattered because they know they weren't without sin. They left. Jesus raised up and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Had no man condemned thee? And she said, no man, Lord. Jesus knew these, uh, in the cases in the Bible, you needed at least two witnesses to have an accuser. No one was there to testify against her. They all had left. He knew in her heart that she was repentant. He knew she had repented in her heart. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. But what does he say? Well, we mess up a lot of times. People get healed. People get delivered. They go on doing what they do. They lie. A lot of them are lying say they come to church. A lot of them are lying say they get saved. But Jesus said, go and sin no more. Uh-huh. We understand that the letter killeth, but the spirit, the spirit of the letter, make it in alive. We want people to be able to be free through the power of God. Free to receive forgiveness. We ought to forgive everybody. The Bible lets us know if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. So we got to forgive everybody. We ought to ask and believe. And believe that all things are possible to them that believe. In the fall of day, we find Jesus identifying to the Jews who are true disciples. Who is truly free? Who is truly free? If you love God, the Bible says you will keep his commandments. And you will show love one for another. You don't have to argue with nobody to say they say or say they are a disciple of Christ. They're not showing love to one another, they mind themselves and mind to themselves. The Jews were caught up on physically being Father Abraham's seed. Read your Bible. The father of faith children, but they weren't his spiritual children. If they were Abraham's spiritual children, they would do the works of Abraham. By faith, Abraham, the Bible said, when he was called, he what? He went out into a place which he should receive after for an inheritance. He obeyed God and he went out, not knowing where he was going, but what? He believed God. For the Bible said, the Pharisees and scribes wouldn't believe the truth. There are people that won't believe the truth today. They'd rather believe a lie. That's why you got so many dramas. People would rather believe something juicy that's a lie than receive the truth. But Jesus is the truth and the lie. They claim to be the sons of God, but how can you love the parent and hate the son? <laughs> how can you love the husband and hate the wife? How can you love the parents and hate the children? Many of us aren't free today. We're in Independence Day. We're not free though because we're holding some things. We're holding some things in our heart that we can't go no far farther with the Lord. We show partiality. We don't love everybody. And we don't treat everybody right. We say to ourselves, you, you, the devil got you tricked. You believe you saved, but you're not saved. Because you're not doing according to the word of God. But when we come to Jesus, all things ought to change when Jesus is not alive. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. I ain't got God in your life and you won't accept Jesus, you won't accept what the word says. To be free, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. You must believe the word of God and accept it and receive it. You must believe that God raised him from the dead. You gotta repent, you gotta believe on him. You gotta believe the word and then continually stay in the word. You know, like, well, a lot of times we like to quit. But quitters never win and winners never quit. You gotta continue on. You gotta stay in the word, knowing that the word is true. If you want truth, you gotta stay in the word of God. That you receive the truth. Jesus is that living word of God, the Bible tells us. And he will cause us to live in abundance. He'll cause us to be holy and sanctified. He'll cause that righteous life through the power of the Holy Ghost to be upon us. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 in your Bible, it reads, Casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. you got to cast those things out. You know, the devil always throwing things in your mind. Always put things in your mind. You know it's World War U. It's not World War everybody else. Really, it's you. 
I always tell people, when you start pointing the finger at everybody else, look at them other fingers curled up. Where are they going? They point it back at you. One finger that way, and three point back at me. It's you. This world war you, you got to deal with. It's you, you got to overcome yourself so that you can have Jesus. That's why Paul said, I had to crucify myself. I had to crucify the flesh. I got to let it die daily because the flesh want to get unruly. Y'all laugh when I say, you know how the flesh do. Flesh want to slap them, want to hit them, want to kill them, want to shoot them, want to do everything. You got to crucify the flesh. And says, so we're going to obey the word of God. Spirit rule inside of me. So we got to cast out on man everything against the knowledge of God and bring him into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Receiving him, living for him makes us free from sin. If you're living for the Lord, living blameless, free from the power of sin, no more slave. Well, I ain't a slave. I don't have no chains on me. You got spiritual chains on you. You got spiritual feathers on your feet that you can't praise God. You feel weighted. You know how you weight, y'all feel weighted down and nothing on you? You weighted down by sin and all those things that you let people throw up on you. And all the cares of this life that you get carried around and Jesus told her, give them unto me. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. You're no more slave. You're no more legally bound or forced to continue in sin which you were born into. Jesus, the second Adam, has made us free. Whom the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. We can live without sinning. You know, a lot of religions don't practice. They think they can. We can live without sinning because of the work of Jesus Christ and the inner working of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, on the inside. And then if we have a fault, if we have an error, then we ought to go quickly to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me. I misspoke, I misspoke, I did something wrong. Clear it up right now. Jesus is the I am. Jesus is the light of the world. We believe that. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. He is the answer to every prayer. He's the rock in a weary land. Uh, we got some weariness going on. When you hear the news all the time, you know, can we ever hear good news? Something's happening one time back there. Used to, years ago, you'd hear one thing, and then it would take a long time for you to hear another. Now you hear uh, one week, 17. Next week, 13 shot, kill. You hear things right after another in a weary land. But Jesus is our advocate. He's our Oscar Wilder. He's our fortress. He's our strong top. He's our everything. Jesus will remove the burdens that are weighing us down. The Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily what? Be set up. If it were easy, then that means. It don't take much more to knock you off course. You thought it was so hard. You know, but that little, the Bible says little foxes, them little things that throw you off course. You know, they didn't put mystery in front of my name. I'm dumb. They didn't say miss. I'm mad at them. <laughs> they didn't recognize me. <laughs> I'm mad at them. I hate them now, you know. That little thing, because they, do you know who you are? Amen. Do you know your name? Yeah, like when I grow up, uh, do you know who you are? Do you know what I called you? Amen. You ought to know what the Lord said. Amen. These little things that throw us off course. I wanted to bake the pound cake. They didn't ask me in the kitchen. Hey, let sister, send your bacon this week. I'm quitting the church. I've been baking that pound cake for 15 years. Just trying to be welcoming and let her make it this time. We let the easy things knock us off court. And the bad thing about it, we laugh now, but one of these days Jesus is going to come back. Right. And if we haven't gotten it right, as we used to pre preach about the lady laying it on the shelf, and we didn't get it off the shelf in time, we shouldn't be laying it up there and putting it off and let these things knock. Because he know, and the Bible said, a twinkle of my eye. He going to be there. You ain't got time to get right. You ain't got time to say, oh, before you you go. You better keep it right and stay right with the Lord. Amen. So Jesus will Lord to remove those chains, those fetters, the things that are holding us down. Are we new creations? We're free, but are we new creation? The Bible says you're a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, any mankind, any man or woman, male or female, if you be in Christ, you are a new creature. When you got saved, something ought to change on the inside of you. Yeah. I got love for everybody. It seems like a, a great love 
forgiving me when I got saved. I don't think he ever nobody. I go to bed at night. I ain't trying to get even with nobody. I sleep in peace. You ought, to, you ought to have the love of God that just surround your heart when you got saved. Amen. All things are passed away. You know how we hold on to things? Yeah, I remember what they did in 1971. All things are passed away, but all, all things have become new. Have you been made free? Can you remember the Lord made you free? A lot of us say we saved already. Can you remember the day the Lord made you free? Was it on a Sunday? Was it on a Monday? Was it on a Tuesday? Y'all need to start singing a song at home. On a Wednesday, he set me free. On a Thursday, God made a way for me. On Saturday, God saved me. On Sunday, I was in my wrong mind. I went to a meeting. I went to church. You might have got saved at home. But you ought to know the day that the Lord made you free. Glory to God. Was it on a Friday? Was it on a Saturday? Today could be your day. If you're not free today, God will make you free today. He can free you right now while I'm preaching this word. He can free you right now. The Holy Ghost can free you of that heavy load. You heavy load, you bear down. Glory to God. Get that a shot. Glory to God. The Lord will make you free. Today could be your day today. Don't you leave here in bondage today. I declare you'll be free in your mind, free in your spirit, free in your body today. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Get rid of that confusion. The Bible said that God's not the author of confusion. Y'all know, wherever the saints ought to be when you make it to town, when you make it to the meeting, when you make it to the family discussion, confusion ought to dissipate. Because God's not the author of confusion. You say you say. So when you get a peace on him, go into God. Not confused. Not jump on the evil side, but do what God wants you to do. Let deliriousness go. Let double-mindedness go. You unstable and self-esteem, let it go. Let God give you your self-esteem back. Oh my God, you're holding on to pride and hatred. Let it go today. You lack self-control, let it go today. You got some guilt in your mind. Let it go today. And let God fill you with his love and his presence. Let go today. Those things that have knocked us down and frustrated us, let them go. We ought to be free because who the Lord has made free is free indeed. You want to say, Lord Jesus, set me free. I'm free through Christ. I'm free from bondage. <laughs> I'm free from the things of this world. Because I have let Jesus come into my life. I'm free from illegal and legal drugs. Because the Lord is in my life. I'm free, some for alcohol, but I'm free from alcohol today. Because the Lord is in my life. Yeah. I'm free from all kind of addiction, whether it be sexual, whatever they may be, because the Lord is in my life. Yeah. I'm free from lust of the flesh. I'm free from lust of the eye. I'm free from the pride of life, because the Son has made me free. I'm free from the king helpers today, because the Lord has made me free. I'm free from captivity.
That's the only way you're going to make it. Somebody said, I tried everything, but you're going to try Jesus. Glory to God. He was never meant to be the afterthought, but just think on it. You should have thought about it first. But now you done went through all of that. You done went through your 18 step process, but you forgot about Jesus. You need Jesus in your life. Jesus can make the difference. Jesus can make a drunk man sober. <laughs> if he gives his life to him right then. I'm tired of the way I'm going. I'm tired of the way I'm going through. You ought to get tired. I got tired. I knew the Lord had put a call on my life. I got tired. I said, Lord, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of running. Because things aren't going to go right time to do right. Huh? We ought to get to that place. Some people fight a lifetime in misery. Know the Lord got so much for you. You've been prophesied to. Some people have seen dreams of it and they're still running. Running. And you're not doing nothing. Doing all kinds of things. People stay out of church. You, what you doing at home? You ain't doing nothing at home. You're going to lose. You're going to go to hell for watching TV at home and come to church. My God. You're going you to lose out on salvation. My God. Because you're what you got is more important than what God called you to do. I'm not going to lose my soul. My God. You know, how, you know how we hear when people go to jail? You know what I'm saying? Lord, they stole $30. They're going to jail. I said, why didn't they steal millions? If you're going to jail, you might as well steal millions. That's how I feel. You're going to go to hell. You might as well go all the way. God made you do all this. Lord, I can't do that. You're going to miss heaven for one thing. And, this, and, that, and that's eternity. You're not getting out of it. You can't get out. People think they're going to get out. You know, that's because the media, the devil fools you. He fools society. You know how he fools society? Because every time somebody dies, everybody, they say, I know they rest in heaven. See, that's how the devil fools you. Because you know everybody ain't going to heaven. They were shot killing 20 people. Never had a chance to say, forgive me, Lord, how they in heaven. But the devil will fool me. You see people rest in heaven. They had a struggle in their life. But you got to confess with your mind the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can be free in your mind, free in your heart. You can't serve God and man. You can't have two gods before you. God's a jealous God. And many people in society, they don't say it, but they want two gods before them. They want to do what they want to do and serve God. Yeah, I never heard so many people. I got a relationship with God too. But you never worship Him. You never pray. You never want to come to church at all. You got a, you got a relationship with God. That's how the devil got you fooled. I read my Bible at home. And it never tells you to be right. Uh, don't you argue with these folks? I pray that the Lord touch their mind, touch their heart, touch their will. Because we do whatever we want to do. Can't nobody make us do what we don't want to do. We lied and said somebody did. You did. If you don't want to go, you don't go. If you don't want to come, you don't come. We can't make you come. We can't make you do. Well, I want to do what the Lord said. Do. Jesus, 
come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Be Lord of my life. Be in my heart. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. If you made that commitment today and you confess that, you're already saved. You need to get with a church that teaches the whole Bible. Teach the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It teaches everything that the Word says and adheres to the Word of God. Maybe you're sick in your body today. If you can put your hand on that as a point of contact, we believe by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By Jesus' stripes, we were, we are healed. We believe in God for you today. You keep on praying till you get healed. And if God heal you, go back to that doctor and let him even confess that the Lord has healed you. Praise the Lord. I always tell people, if you go to the doctor, you don't go to all these specialists, you ought to do what they say. They told you, you know, went to a mall, they told you what medicine to take. You ought to be taking that medicine. Until they take you off of until the Lord heals your body. Glory to God. He can heal you any way he wants. And they'll confer he healed you. They'll say, the Lord never touch you. I know you were terminal. <laughs> but the doctor said, God has healed you. I don't see it no more. I don't see it. I know I was treated. I know we got x-rays. But God has dried it up. <laughs> From the inside out and the outside in. If you say that you don't have the Holy Ghost, we all need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. As you all hear, the Holy Ghost is not a dance. You know, people say, I got, I got the Holy Ghost. They run and dance. It will empower your dance. But you need the Holy Ghost on the inside to abide in you. And your prayer ought to be, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. We speak the Holy Ghost today. That God will fill you and refill you with the Holy Ghost. And God will touch you with me and bless you. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give God praise today.